Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 83 today in season 5 for the Belgium Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one at Monza, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, as it was a titanic scrap between the two Italian brands in Formula 1. Ferrari, the prancing horse, versus Lamborghini, us with the golden ball. And for the second time this season, we're able to win on Italian soil for this team. Yep, from Imola to Monza, we took the victory. We had a lot up against us and things didn't go our way, but we had pure speed with the car, with the engine, and we're able to come back versus Max Verstappen. It was, to be honest, really nice actually having a proper battle with Verstappen for the first time in team, well, ever really in the series, because he hasn't really been on it since like season one. And obviously in season one, we weren't at a stage where we were fighting for, for the race wins and for the championships, etc. So really cool to go up against Verstappen and in the Ferrari, of course. And obviously doubly great for me as an individual, I guess, that poor chair wasn't doing so well. He had a little bit of difficulty, I think, getting stuck in traffic. The slipstreaming was ridiculous, where you had some cars yo-yoing about five positions, up and down, up and down, and in the end, uh, poor chair landed in P6. So we take the lead of the Drivers' Championship. We're very much now into the last third of the season, but Monza is a very unique circuit with when it's all about the power, and clearly that's maybe not completely the strength of the Honda power unit that is obviously powering Aston Martin at the moment. But Belgium, it's a bit of a different story. There is a big compromise to be done with wings and aero and therefore Aston may be back on form and maybe we're going to have more competition from them and it just looks like Ferrari are going from strength to strength. So, and you've got other teams obviously in there. Audi have been cropping up and looking stronger you've got to say as well in the last few episodes and that's a nuisance to me, a nuisance to poor chair, a nuisance to to Sonoda because that's just other cars that have less to lose. They, they, they can go for those dive bombs. They can go for the aggressive moves because they're not looking to try and also just stay in the race and limit damage in a championship fight. You know, the fact that Russell's here in P1, Gasly P2, Piastri, P3, uh, P4, McLaren are coming back in a little bit, it seems. Mercedes as well. How can we forget them? Leclerc and Bottas, they've not got a lot to lose either. They're in their own battles in the constructors with Ferrari and Mercedes being very close in the constructors, I think, nowadays. Um, you know, th that's going to be another spanner in the work as we get to this last third of the season where the pressure just goes up a notch and it starts to all really matter. You feel like every point Every position is going to matter with it being so close as well between myself, Terrible Chair and Sonoda. But for the first time this entire season, we lead the championship. Kind of odd to say that, but yeah, we, we it's not been the one we've been controlling. Poor Chair has been in control, but it feels like the tide has turned slightly. We have been just consistently there whilst Poor Chair has been having some wobbles, including now. Because in Q2, we were just going through the motions of Friday qualifying here because it's a sprint weekend. Uh, you know, just going through the motions. I wasn't even really mentioning how Q1 went because that was all fine and dandy. But again, again, for I think the fourth time now this season, Poor Chair has been knocked out in Q2. That's a big blow for him. I mean, to be fair, I only just got away with it. It actually seems like we have maybe got a bit of lack of pace around here in comparison to last time out, because I came B10. I thought we don't need to go out again, and Verstappen got knocked out as well. I didn't even know that. Verstappen went even lower than poor chair. The man who I was fighting for the win, I just complimented him. He's down in P15. Oh, it's a shocker. It's a shocker for both of them, and disappointment for, uh, for Haas, I must say, with both Haas drivers out, because they have been a staple of, you know, at least one of them getting to the top 10. So things are certainly shifting from Monza to Belgium. Don't know if maybe, you know, it's just really that compromise that you have to make. And some people have got this set up right for qualifying. Maybe some will have it wrong for the race. Who knows? But we're through into the last part of qualifying here on the Friday. Very overcast conditions this entire time. And this has been a very messy lap as we lock up into the last corner. And this is the only set of soft ties I have because we need to save a set 
for the race to help us out, really. So that is going to be it. I may as well actually have been knocked out myself in Q2. To be fair, even with that horrendous run, we got P9 because Piastri had an even worse run. So it was still worth it to go out in Q3 and we at least get one position there for P9. But Liam Lawson, hang on a minute. Liam Lawson, Red Bull Ford on pole position for the sprint. Incredible. It's the first time this entire season one of the McLarens or Red Bulls have been on the top spot. I, I, I say those two teams because obviously if you follow the series, McLaren and Red Bull have pretty much been the only two teams consistently at the top of the championship fights for most of the whole series. It's the first season where McLaren have been nowhere and Red Bull, they've had a few little moments of, you know, speed, but they've really also not been there either. And the pecking order has been, you know, it has very much changed. The status quo has been, you know, us, Aston Martin, Audi, Haas, but now things are starting to maybe tilt back towards maybe Red Bull at least with a pole position. Obviously Lawson will want to try and make up for that blunder that happened to the Austrian Grand Prix where he was denied a win. Um, but it's it's a real nice mixture up there. You know, Audi in second, Ferrari third, Aston Martin back in fourth place there with Sonoda. So it's going to be a very interesting sprint where potentially it looks like we're all of a sudden now on the back foot compared to a very strong dominant kind of pace at Monza. And we're going to wait Waste no time and find out as we get into the start of the sprint here around Spa Francorchamps as we go to five red lights here on this Saturday for the sprint for the Belgium Grand Prix. It's lights out. We're underway. It's a good, good start for us as we're slicing through three, four cars there. I think that was into turn one now. Three wide with the Aston Martins banging tyres with Sonoda. Joe Guan Yu comes off the better of uh, the three of us as he gets up into fourth place. And we're still locked into a drag race with Sonoda and the Aston Martin is winning out but we come back at Sonoda as we go through a Rouge and Radion side by side up the hill you can fit a piece of paper between our two side pods there he's now going on the defensive we're going on the attack we've got the racing line can we outbreak him it's going to be difficult we're trying to go the long way around have to try and give him the room still and Sonoda unfortunately has the better racing line I go wide and all of a sudden Sainz goes through on the inside Leclerc tries to make a dive bomb you saw that little twitch on the steering will I had to make because if I kept turning in that would have been a collision with Leclerc in the Mercedes we squeeze him out for good measure but very much under pressure now all of a sudden I thought we could go on the offense versus Sonoda but now very much on the defense and it's because we've got damage from that turn one incident with Sonoda as oh <laughs> Leclerc! Leclerc is out of the Grand Prix in a flash. He's crashed into the back of us. How on earth we don't have a rear tyre coming off or rear wing damage, I'll never know. The front wing's pretty... Yeah, it's lime now, so no wonder I had so much understeer. I was unable to keep it side by side with Sonoda at the end of the Kemmel straight and how science got past so easily, but what on earth just happened there with Leclerc? I, I didn't even feel like I was properly even racing him because he, he was quite far back after I squeezed him out. Uh, but clearly not, and he's got it all crossed up behind me. But this is the contact then that Sonoda, just that, that's not even that much. It was so subtle. It was so subtle. That's just a race. I can't even be angry at Sonoda. That's just a racing incident because it was the most subtle of touches and it broke my front wing. But this, whoa, what the? Wow, Leclerc just got it all crossed up there. He was nowhere near making any sort of move. Um, it really just looked like he basically outbroke himself um, and just whacked me in the rear, basically. I'm actually very, very lucky that we didn't spin out. But now a safety car is out and we've come in because of this front wing damage. Because we could have stayed out because we were still, you know, wherever we were in the top 10. But now with the wing damage, because there's a safety car, that gives me a chance to make a free pit stop with the front wing. Oh my god. Oh, team. Team, you've had a howler. I've had a howler. What's up? I left it on auto. Oh my god. I left the front wing damage on auto. And my team have sat there and thought, oh yeah, no. He's coming in just for a tyre change under a safety car. He, he doesn't want a front wing change. Surely not, even with that level of damage. He can't be wanting a front wing change. What? <coughs> oh, my God. Right, well, we've come off the back of a really well-executed Italian Grand Prix where we went on for the win. And now we're having one of the messiest starts to a Grand Prix weekend ever. We've had front wing damage. 
Um, we've had a car crash into us on the rear end, and now we've got come in to make use of a safety car to get us a free pit stop, and the team haven't even changed my front wing. So I would have been saying this is going to be quite good for us because we're going to be on fresher, you know, di a different set of soft tyres that will have a bit more grip initially. We'll have the front wing changed, and we can just attack like a stabbed rat. But now we're more like an injured one because, well, we've still got that damage, and you can see... I actually found it quite difficult just to get past the two the two Andrettis. Like, that was a lot more effort than it should have been. And versus Mick Schumacher now, we've set a purple in the last sector, fair play. But that's because that's mostly all about power. But in the middle sector, I'm losing time. And in the first sector, well, I mean, I'm trying my best to get past Mick Schumacher as we go around the outside. But look at the lifting I'm having to do. That court, that, 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 that was a proper turn. In these modern cars, the run up a Rouge up the hill, hardly any, any sort of effort needed, but that was proper effort needed just to get the tar. Oh my god. And we've locked up. We've locked up now. It was effort getting the car turned up that hill and yeah, apparently effort just slowing the car down on the brakes because we've locked up. We've gone nearly straight on and Schumacher has got past us again in the Gulf Williams. So we're back down to 19th place. At this point, I was thinking, oh, we'd probably be around, I don't know, P12. You know, by the time we get to lap six here, we won't be fighting for P18. We'll be fighting for the points again. And we can come back at people who are maybe starting to feel some tire wear on their softs. But no, instead, we're re-overtaking Schumacher. There is some pace in the car. You can see we've done a purple in Sector 1. We are able to go quick in Sector 3. But Sector 2, I'm just so slow because of that front wing damage. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty much put a whole sprint race in jeopardy. Uh, whilst Lawson, by the way, still leads the race from that pole position. Russell second, Gasly third. Uh, he's just overtaken Joe Guan Yu there, I think that is. And Sonoda is overtaking his own teammate on the last lap of this sprint, or is trying to, I should say. So Joe Guan Yu was in third place, doing very well for Aston Martin, but Gasly's just got him there on the Kemmel straight. Sonoda up, uh, well, tried to get up to P4, but he's actually held him at bay there. So a little bit of a frosty situation, really, because if you're, if you're Aston Martin, you probably prioritise Sonoda being the man in the championship fight and Joe Guan Yu being a new member of the team. Oh, my God. Okay, if that if that doesn't sum up how this sprint's gone, I don't know what will. Bad mistake, but it's odd because I don't have any aero balance. My front balance is... Well, my front's just not in balance with the rear, is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, yeah, sloppy mistake, sloppy sprint all around. From me, from the team, not changing the front wing, but also that's kind of me because I should have put it on yes. But also that's something that I has been in the F1 game for like two, three years now. They really need to change the sensitivity of auto on the front wing damage thing because how could you not think I didn't want a front wing change there? Either way, though, far away from us, Liam Lawson wins the sprint at Spa. Really big day for Red Bull Ford as they reclaim a bit of their pace from previous years. Russell second, Gasly third. Joe Guan Yu managed to keep Sonoda at bay, which is kind of maybe good for us. He scores, you know, just uh, one less point. You know, poor chair up there. Both of them will be starting in the top 10. And this is where we have qualified then, basically, for the full Grand Prix tomorrow. 19th place. I, I'm actually thinking maybe we just take penalties and take new engine components. Remember, we made a mistake in Portugal where I thought I could just take one component change and we got a back of the grid and I was kind of regretting that we didn't take a whole set of uh, components. Well, we can make up for that mistake today. If we're 19th place, we may, as, we may as well be 22nd place, but with a whole new engine, knowing that we'll, we won't have to take another penalty again for the rest of the season, which will be very important to, to us and to me. So um, I think that's going to be the vibe. But yeah, Lawson wins it. Really, really odd uh, where this pace has come from because Lando Norris is down in 13th place. Poor chair also had a bit of a, you know, difficulty in the sprint, you know, being, you know, what was it, P14. He climbed up to P10, though, along with Verstappen, who was 15, wasn't it? He climbed up to P9. So poor chair gets a top 10 start for tomorrow's race. Sonoda P5. Um, that's a little bit worrying. You know, we're going to have to do a lot of work to try and limit the damage to both of those guys in the championship. Um, but I will at least have a fresh engine to do it with because, yeah, I have have decided we will take a whole column of components because, yeah, what's three positions, really? 
um, and a fresh engine will negate those three positions really quite quickly. You'll probably see uh, with the kind of, you know, boosted engine power. And it just also means that we have now no race in the future to the end of the season where we have to take a penalty. Whereas others, you know, poor chair and Sonoda, they well could have a penalty coming still that they have to take for uh, worn components, you know, in any of the races coming up. Whereas I know now definitively, I would hope, uh, unless we have our own engine failure, obviously, uh, that we won't have to take a penalty now for the rest of the season. So that's at least going to be a silver lining I can take from a very messy, messy sprint weekend here at Spa. We now go to the full Grand Prix, knowing what we have to do from the back of the grid. It's max damage limitation versus our rivals. Let's go to the grid. Welcome to this visit to the Ardennes countryside. Spa-Francorchamps hosted its first Grand Prix back in 1925, and this historic track is loved by drivers and fans alike, and us here in the commentary box too. So it's a warm welcome from the Belgian Grand Prix. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardennes forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, uh, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there's no place quite like it. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Liam Lawson lines up on pole position and starting next to them is George Russell. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Gasly, Joe, Sonoda, Sainz, Bottas, Albon, Verstappen, Theo Porsche, Oscar Piastri, Drogovic, Norris, Fittipaldi, Ocon, Ricardo, Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, Perez, Sargent, Leclerc, and the owner driver rounds off the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And with me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. We should talk about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Yeah, I think this is completely the right decision because I can see P19 from, from here. I can literally see where we would have lined up. It's really not going to make that much of a difference. Um, what is going to make me make a difference is the Claire being here. We're going to have a quick car with us at the back here. You know, it's not going to be a simple case of slicing through. Leclerc may defend us. Um, you know, hopefully we can just get the jump on him basically off the start. Hopefully there's no bad blood between us two because, you know, it was no one's fault really. Even his wasn't really, you know, maybe slightly his fault of outbreaking himself. But, you know, obviously just kind of, you know, two cars moving a little bit awkwardly in the brake zone and uh, the collision happened. Uh, He's chosen the mediums, Leclerc has. I've gone hards. I've gone very different. No one else is on hards in this race right now. They're either on softs, which is most people uh, outside the top 10, or you've got a few medium tire runners then, or people who are inside the top 10, Leclerc. I've gone hards because I want to try something different from the back of the grid. You've got to. You've got to when you're from the back of the grid, going longer in the race and hopefully being quicker in the second stint as we now line up in our slot and immediately are going to go to five red lights to the full Belgium Grand Prix. Lights out. And away we go. A lot of wheel spin for a couple of people. Sergio Perez, mainly Leclerc on the inside. And we've awkwardly given uh, Leclerc a love tap. We've nearly hit him again as we have to out, uh, outbreak ourselves, basically, and uh, have a bit of a half lockup spin into turn one to dodge the Mercedes. That was um, not the kind of start I was looking for. That was, you know what that was? That was my sprint race summed up in a race start. That was, again, really messy. What is going on with us right now? This has certainly been one of the messiest uh, race episodes we've done. Like, I'm just making a few too many mistakes or things are just awkwardly happening. Like, Sergeant there blocking me on the inside. Leclerc's now gone for a move. He's made contact with Sergeant. And so we're in the heart of Sector 2 on lap 1 and neither me or Leclerc are even up a position. We're still in last place. This might be the worst start we've ever had from a back of the grid. What is going on right now? Uh, I know I've chosen the hards. That might be a, a good reason why we're feeling a little bit slower. You know, because obviously we are on the slowest compound. It's going to take a little while for us to really feel very, very quick. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. For the third time, I have made a little bit of contact with Leclerc. And that could have been race ending that one. Well and truly, Leclerc must be thinking I'm just taking the piss out of him for what he did to me in the sprint with how close I'm getting to his rear end three times there as we make a double pass on him and Mick Schumacher because I just had enough of what was going on. I thought, look, we need to make a ballsy move there and just get going in this race. And we have got going. We're now up to P19 where we would have been had it not been for the engine penalties. We're now going to try and overtake Sergio Perez there, having to use a bit more battery than I would have thought to get the move done. So, uh, yeah, still definitely waiting for these hards to come into their own. But it's Lawson who leads the way then still off that pole position. Sainz in second, Russell third. So the Audi is overtaking the Ferrari as there is a slow car. Oh, Lando Norris, Lando Norris is out. Magnussen slowed up for him and we nearly careered into his back end. What is going on here with the brake checking and me unable to, uh, unable to slow the car down as uh, Carlos Sainz, uh, whilst his teammate uh, goes up in smokes, Liam Lawson loses first place. What a horrible lap for Red Bull Ford. They've lost the lead and the second car's out of the Grand Prix. Lando Norris is out. Maybe kind of, you know, maybe that was why he was so slow in the sprint, Norris, compared to Lawson. Um, maybe he just had a really worn engine and it's now obviously conked over in the full Grand Prix here as we make a little cheeky dive to the inside of Magnussen trying to roll the car through. Rear end steps out a little bit. It very much uh, has been uh, not the best of uh, Grand Prix starts for me, to be honest. The car is... Uh, not as stable as you'd like it would seem, but we are slowly, slowly bedding into this race. Lap four, hoping to make a move here on Ricardo, but Ricardo blocks this. So we have to go to the inside there. Fittipaldi defending Ricardo and defending me. And it's I'm finding it tricky to get past Ricardo and Fittipaldi here. We're having to really be patient and now get to the inside. We're inches away from crashing with our old teammate Daniel Ricardo there. I think it might just be the hards, you know. It might be the hards just making it very difficult right now because at this stage, there's no, there's not much tyre wear. Um, that's the only explanation because we're, we're actually finding it so difficult to make those de decisive little diving moves. Like, remember last episode, I made a four-car overtake at Monza. Like, well and truly, yeah, this has uh, not been the best Grand Prix for us so far in terms of performances, but we are just gotta, we've got to stick with it because we know the tyre will come towards us and others will start to wear out. But uh, as we do that, we just saw Sonoda making a move for third place. So Yuki is up into P3. That's not great news for me or poor chair as we make a move on Fittipaldi to get up into 14. We need to get a move on here because Sonoda, with the way he has been driving when the car works for him, let's forget Monza, last five episodes, he's been him. He has been him. And he's been overtaking everyone left, right and centre. So I reckon Sonoda has a good chance now that he's in P3 to go on to do more. To maybe chase after second, chase after first place. So he needs to be making these moves now on Alexander Albon in the McLaren. He goes defensive to the inside. We're going to try and go the long way around. Try and get the traction down. Again, having to soar away at the steering wheel because these hards are still... Not really feeling as comfy as I would like, but we get the move done nonetheless. But look at this, Sonoda, he's already up to second. We've missed it, missed him overtaking Lawson, but he has done. And now, Yuki Buddy Sonoda gets up into first place of the Belgium Grand Prix. It's a quick, swift and easy overtake for the Aston Martin Honda driver. He's on the medium, Sainz on the soft, so Sonoda playing the long game, and now his medium tyres are probably the much better race tyre compared to any people on softs. I'm hoping that in the next five laps, his mediums and everyone else's mediums will be worn out, and I will then be on the best race tyre. But that's a, it's a long time to kind of wait uh, for that moment. So right now we're still kind of struggling to really confidently maneuver our way around these cars. Like Even this now, like, I don't know. It, something feels awkward to me engaging with the AI in this race. Like that, that, that hesitation I had of which way to go on Ocon is the same hesitation I had on Ricardo. I think with how the sprint went and the first few laps where I nearly crashed with Leclerc three times, it just made me a little bit hesitant now to go for that confident move as we watch Sonoda confidently pull away from Lawson. 
He's nearly three seconds ahead. Oh my word. Joe Guan Yu's only P5, so this is all Sonoda. He's actually loving life here around Spa as he goes on to have a very dominant lead, really, relative to everyone else being very close together. There's a big train uh, led by Carlos Sainz, Bottas then, poor chair in P8, Verstappen, Drugovic, all in this train. Piastri just catching up to that as well as me but look at that side by side between Paul Chair and I think the Audi as we look to make a move on Piastri bold brave but we made it work around the outside of Blanchimont had to get out of the throttle for a little bit just to make sure we actually don't go onto the grass but into the bus stop then Verstappen blocks me on the exit and Piastri is invited back in so yeah there's something about just getting very close to every single rear wing in this episode I think I've stared at the most rear wings this closely I, as I ever have in any of these series. As again, we close up to Verstappen again. I make the wrong decision there looking to the right. We should have gone to the left. And so we are now stuck behind the Ferrari again, having to lift off up the hill. What is going on, man? What is going on? I have no confidence right now. If I, if I was given a focus level, like the AI do, I would have a focus of like 35 right now because... I am not maximising what I know I can do in this car. What we did literally last episode is, again, Max frustrates us. He blocks us again. He steps out of throttle. I have to get out of throttle. And he's held his back again. It takes us a whole lap. A whole lap. And we're still behind him. I don't have the onus to dive down the inside of him because I'm just not sure right now. As we get the traction here, we're going to commit and try and gain some confidence back as we keep the foot in. We're going to be side by side still just to, uh, to, to get to the apex of, uh, of Radion. And now closing up to Felipe Dragovic. The uh, clouds have come over all of a sudden. I don't think there was any chance of rain in this race, but I'm, you've got to agree with me. I'm not going to lie. It looks like rain is on the way, so you have to watch out for that. But we chop off Drogovic at the uh, exit of the corner. Sorry, mate, but just trying to get a bit more feisty here in this race and try and not pull my punches as much as we have done in the first, uh, you know, six, seven laps here as we close up to Bottas. Committed as ever now on the left. And we've got a bit more newfound confidence, to be honest. It may just be the fact that the hard tyres are now the best race tyre. By lap 12, like, the mediums are definitely wearing out. And they're wearing out now because everyone's making a pit stop. Poor chairs in, Lawson in, Sonoda is in on the hard tyres. And, uh, well, this is what I'm hoping. They're all going on hards. Maybe some of the soft tyre runners go for mediums. But I will be going on to uh, a softer compound than I have been on. And hopefully we'll have a bit more pace, but... Sonoda, I think he, I think I can sadly say he's booked in this win because he was gaining on us already on that one outlap of his. And he's what, like four seconds up the road? Like he's dominating this Belgium Grand Prix after, you know, after a very difficult race for him at Monza. You know, he had five races in a row where he was the man of the hour, overtaking left, front and centre, getting wins, getting podiums. Monza happened where he had an engine failure. And it's those moments where when you're in a title fight, you have you have you, either two things can happen. You actually crumble and bottle it or you pick yourself up and you go again. And that's exactly what Sonoda is doing. And he's gone again and he's done it with vengeance here because he's absolutely slapping everyone up in this Grand Prix as we are now overtaking Dragovic for the second time just to get back into P10 because my pace dropped off so much on the end of those hards that uh, I lost time basically because it was effective an overcut an overcut I was forced to do because obviously that's the whole point of this strategy now I'm hoping I can go quicker as we now send it to the inside of Ocon to get into P9 and we are now, you know, just about two seconds maybe under to poor chair, our teammate, which is pretty damn good. You know, we've recovered really well from 22nd place to 9th place here. Lap 19, three laps to go. Sonoda, five and a half seconds ahead of Pierre Gasly. Joe Grand, you in third though, showing Aston Martin really bounce back here at Spa. It's a checkerboard of Aston Martin to Audi. Then it's Verstappen, Lawson, Russell, poor chair and myself. And it's, it's a train, really, from Sainz to myself. But that, the problem is there is we're all giving each other DRS. And unlike Monza, because it's not, you don't have a slingshot run 
on this main straight. It's kind of like a run up the hill. You can maybe lose a bit of time with the dirty air. It's not as, you know, as you know, you're not swapping positions left, right and center like you do at Monza. It's more like you see in F1 Esports where there's like a DRS train and we're basically being trained. And it's not even by sign, sorry, it's by Verstappen. It's a train from P4 down to P9 basically. And that's giving Gasly and Sonoda and Joe all the breathing room. And hang on a minute, look at this, lap 20, Joe Guan Yu has just overtaken Gasly for second place, making it an Aston Martin Honda 1-2 again. They won, and they got a 1-2, remember, only two episodes ago at Portimao. Are they going to do it again? And again, like in Portimao, it's a race where myself and Paul Chair are down the order struggling, and we're both getting held up by Russell, who is being an absolute fiend of a driver right now, the way he's defending. But the problem is, look at this, I'm de deploying ERS and I can't get a headway on Porsche Air because he's pretty decent, obviously, and he's on hards, which the car likes. And look at that, look at the way Russell's defending. He's held me and Porsche Air up so much that I think there's pretty much a one second gap now to the car ahead of him. This, it's getting desperate. I think we need to kind of force a move here with Porsche Air. Because if he can't overtake Russell, I'm going to be stuck with it. Look at that! Oh my god! Russell's chopped him off on the right-hand side. Okay, I've had enough. I've had enough. We need to force a move here. Can we get to the inside, maybe, of poor chair and then send it on Russell? Here we go. Poor chair cuts the curb. We've tried to take Russell wide, and we've actually played a bit of a team game there because I've basically helped poor chair overtake Russell. And obviously, my ulterior motive is now to overtake poor chair to get up into seventh place because I reckon I have the pace over him, but I didn't have enough pace to overtake him and Russell. But oh, hang on a minute. Poor chair's got a penalty. Five seconds. Oh, I wonder if that's for the curb. I want he cut the corner when he overtook uh, Russell and my and kept ahead of me. I think he's I think he's actually genuinely been given a penalty for a corner cut. That was unbelievable. I didn't even know AI could get that. I, I, I don't recall AI usually ever getting corner cut penalties because we've had some absolute terrorism in the past from AI cutting curbs and uh, keeping the position. I, I, I guess this one was a massive one. That was like legitimately the entire curb was cut out there by poor chair. So yeah, not only has he been overtaken for P8, he's got a penalty. Five seconds. That's going to push him down the order. So it's a big, big L for Teo Porsche today. It's a big W for Yuki Tsunoda. He's Eight seconds ahead of his teammate, who is only just ahead of Gasly, showing that it's genuinely Sonoda's pace that has been the, the one for him individually. Yes, the car is there, because it's an Aston Martin 1-2. Sonoda wins again this season. That's not great news for me, but I'm trying to limit the damage with a last corner overtake on Liam Lawson. Once again, we ruin the party for Lawson. We overtake him uh, for another position here, like we did in Austria. Uh, this one was just to limit the damage. And limit the damage we did. P22 to P6. I'll take that. I'll take that. It's just unfortunate how much pace Sonoda had today. He's won the race. That's good news for him. Not great news for us. Aston Martin deserved a win today. And they got it. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Aston Martin's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the biggest names in the sport. They're making their way out to the podium as we speak and the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them. Like in Portimao here at Spa, this feels a little worrisome. Aston Martin get another 1-2 for the season. They are chasing after us in the Constructors' Championship and Sonoda is trying his best to make up for that engine failure at Monza and that's the maximum you can hope winning the race so it is game on it is crunch time and things are getting hotter and hotter guys if you have enjoyed it hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're new around here then do get subscribed for weekly full-on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye